Welcome one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project, brought to us by Konami. The Manhattan Project, the third of the Ninja Turtles games on NES, though it wouldn't be the last, TMNT Tournament Fighter was released a couple of years after this one in 1994, but many gamers played that more on SNES and Genesis than necessarily the NES version. For TMNT 3, though, they kind of took the arcade formula that they used in the last game and perfected it here with more of a classic beat-em-up style, new special moves, and overall just one of the best beat-em-up games on the NES. You can play the game one or two player and of course pick from any of the Ninja Turtles, my personal favorite being Raphael, so I'm going to pick him for this. The difference between the Turtles though this time is they all have their own unique special move, some which work better on certain bosses than others. If you're someone that's mastering the game, actually losing lives and switching between the Turtles is a good strategy on certain bosses to make sure that you complete them quickly and efficiently. However, for this run I'm going to be sticking with Raphael. As we begin, you'll see that the game's design looks similar to TMNT 2, the arcade game, but our health meter is at the bottom of the screen now. You earn a lot more points for defeating enemies in this game than the previous one, so it's a lot higher scoring affair, but you still do gain extra lives for earning points. Every 50,000 points, you earn an extra life, and the way that you defeat enemies dictates how many points that you end up earning. So as you can see, by using the throw maneuver, I'm able to earn 400 points Per kill. Holding down on the D-pad and then attacking will allow you to do the throw move. Similar to TMNT 2 the arcade game, doing the kind of button press of the jump followed by the attack right afterwards will allow you to do your turtle's special move. Unfortunately though, it does end up taking health away, but the good thing is when you're down to one health left in your life, you can keep doing it over and over again without any consequence until you finally end up taking a hit. This makes running through the game actually pretty fun, trying to get down to that one health and seeing how long I'm able to stay alive with just one health while still battling all the enemies. And with the special move, you take him out a lot quicker, so it's actually more efficient and safer sometimes just to keep doing the special move. Especially when you have Raphael. His special move of flying across the screen allows you a lot of times to get out of the range of enemy attacks, especially bosses. So you'll find throughout the course of the game I'm able to use Raphael really efficiently against most boss encounters throughout the course of the game. Similar to TMNT 2, there are hardware limitations with the NES, of course, so that's why we're only going to be dealing with one type of enemy or foot soldier at a given time. You won't get multicolored foot soldiers on screen at the same time. A lot of the enemy attacks are similar to the previous game. You have ones that throw shurikens, you have projectile guys, guys with more close combat, but there are a few new types of foot soldiers throughout the game. We had guys that throw sand at us, for example, earlier. After dealing with the first group of foot soldiers here in front of these beach signs, you will have the uh, signs come crashing down on you with foot soldiers behind them, so be careful of that. Uh, we don't have any kind of sponsorship deal with Pizza Hut this time around, so any of the signage is just kind of generic stuff in this one. After passing this nice sign for Key West, we start heading down. Be careful, there will be foot soldiers that pop out of the ground creating holes that you can fall down, but thankfully going along the right side, very easy to dodge them. When we start heading back to the right here, we're going to hug the right side of the wall so that we're able to dodge all the new holes that end up opening up before attacked by another set of foot soldiers. After this group of enemies though, it's time for the first boss battle of the game. Here we have Rocksteady popping out of the water to immediately start attacking us. Here's where I'm going to start to showcase the kind of skill that you can do with Raphael's special move. As you can see, as every time he kind of rushes through me, I'm able to just go right through him using Raphael's special move 
and it negates the damage, and this is something that we're going to keep doing throughout the course of the game. He does also have the gun to fire out, but since he actually has so little health, only takes a couple of special moves to defeat him. You'll notice quickly the health for the bosses ends up ramping up. Level number two has us on a surfboard. Surfboard is able to kind of go easily anywhere on screen, so not necessarily a realistic thing, but we have to deal with a bunch of foot soldiers, very similar to the skateboarding on the highway level that we saw in TMNT 2, the arcade game. The coolest part, though, for this level is all of the foot soldiers that have these synchronized jumping patterns. There's a bunch of them throughout, and it slows down the game because there's so many enemies coming up, but I always thought this segment in particular was really cool in the game. The fun with all of them jumping up finally does end, and then a group of foot soldiers is kind of casually coming at us. During that segment, though, you'll probably get to see a lot of slowdown as these kind of robots fly out of the water coming towards you. You can do your special move to dodge them. Uh, the three that come at you kind of in a row are coming at you wherever you're standing. Though a little bit later on, like the kind of synchronized foot soldiers, you just have large groups of them starting to come towards you. When this happens, just hang out at the bottom of the screen. Whether it's the jumping foot soldiers or these guys, the very bottom of the screen, you're perfectly safe from all of their attacks. Right after the robots, though, is more of the synchronized jumping foot soldiers. Just stay at the bottom of the screen, you'll also be able to dodge these guys. The rest of the level has us dealing with more foot soldiers and those kind of robots coming at us. Do my best to kind of avoid them because you do have to take out these foot soldiers to progress, but uh, for the most part, usually as long as you're just kind of keeping your movement going, you'll dodge most of those things coming at you. To finish up this part of the stage, we have two of the flying foot soldier guys here. Uh, you can hit them with a special move if you're lucky when they're doing the dives down, or just do your jumping kicks to defeat them. Once they are defeated though, we go to the battleship that ends up approaching us in the background. Kind of a cool little transition here, as that's the second part of stage two. This segment is a little tricky, you'll have some enemies as well as you have all these cannons and other things opening up on the ship itself. You can destroy them using special moves and the like, but for the most part I usually just try to dodge in and out of their projectile fire while dealing with whatever foot soldiers that I have to battle. The most annoying thing about most of the attacks, the fireball thing, is just kind of singeing you. So you have that kind of moment of not only do you take damage, but you're also frozen for a second. Very, very annoying when any game ends up doing this, at least to me. Not taking out any of the guns and all can be fun just trying to jump and seeing how well you can dodge uh, with your skills all the uh, stuff kind of going on, because there is just a lot of chaos going on on this battleship. Thankfully, things slow down a little bit. We finally make it past all of the guns at the front here. And here we have this door open up with a bunch of foot soldiers jumping out towards us. After a couple of groups of them, we then have a group of the white foot soldiers with the swords coming towards us. Pretty much the same kind of standard thing that we've been doing with them. These knife throwing, though, guys, can be a bit annoying because when they throw the knife, they're not just throwing one straight, they're also automatically throwing one diagonal at the same time. Because of this, it can be hard to be able to dodge out of the way of both of them if you're just trying to use your standard attack, but thankfully Raph's special move allows me to get in quickly. The boss for this level is Ground Chuck. Him and Dirtbag usually teamed up in the old 1987 cartoon, and we actually have both of those characters as bosses in this game, so that was nice to see them. Ground Chuck is a little similar to Rocksteady doing the charge move, but he ends up doing a lot more of it. He also, midway through the fight, will end up grabbing this pipe in the background and start swinging at you. Make sure that he's a little bit away from the wall. This is the best way to use Raphael's move efficiently. As long as there's enough space between him and whatever side of the screen he's on, you'll be able to hit him with that special attack and get out of the range of whatever he's going to follow up. And with his charges, you just do like we did before. Every time he charges at you, you just go through him with that special attack, and he goes down in no time. After a cutscene, we then move on to level number three. 
The next stage is on this broken, fallen apart bridge, and because of this there's large gaps that you can easily fall into, so you gotta be careful of that. You then have a series of wrecking balls coming towards you as well during that small segment, so be very careful. I always find it fun in this level to try to use the throw maneuver and get as many of the foot soldiers to go down the pit. Maybe defeat it whether you throw them in a pit or not with that move, but still cool to use. We then start dealing with the Dimension X Rock Soldiers. These guys take a few hits. You can use your throw maneuver on them, and actually you can use it against anyone in the game to do decent damage, but efficiently you can use your special move to really wipe out the Rock Soldiers. A lot of times I like to get them to group up on screen and then do it to try to take out multiple at once, so I only lose one thing of health to take out two or three of them. After dealing with a monster truck segment with Bebop riding it, throwing grenades at us, we then are introduced to the spear-carrying foot soldier guys that can hit you from a decent distance away. Interestingly enough, there are a couple of mid-bosses throughout this game, and the first one that we deal with is Slash. Slash attacks very quickly, that's why the special move, especially with Raphael, is very efficient for going through him. He also will get on his back and fly back and forth across the screen. Using Raphael's special move, just like we've been doing with the charging ability of the other bosses, allows us to keep hitting him over and over again to take him out. Once Slash is defeated though, as long as you have a little bit of health left, there's a full health restore right after the fight. My favorite thing to do in this game, the most satisfying, is when I take out more than one enemy at a time with a special move, especially when it's all three foot soldiers that jump from the background, they line up perfectly. Raphael is great at being able to just run right through them and be able to take them all out. It takes like a little bit of timing because you really gotta wait till the last possible second usually to launch it because there's foot soldiers quickly start the move once they finally become hittable. When they first fly in, there's a brief moment of invulnerability, so until I got used to it, a lot of times I would end up taking out only two of the three with that attack. Here's a fun segment, you're on a small area, the giant wrecking balls are going back and forth with foot soldiers on top of them. You can knock off the foot soldier, which is always fun to do. Like before, with the Dimension X Rock Soldier guys, I'm going to do my best to use my special move efficiently to take them out. Be careful of the giant weight throwing guys, similar to the giant wrecking ball throwing guys earlier, it's the kind of same deal, but they will squash you instead. Now, for this battle against Bebop, he ends up having this big kind of spinning thing on his head that he throws out consistently. Anytime that he does this, you can do this Raphael spin move in between his attacks. When he's also close, he will sometimes do his kick and such, but that's why we just want to make sure that there's enough space between me, him, and whatever side of the screen he's on, and usually I'm able to go through him. That fight is even easier with other turtles. For example, Leonardo can actually use his special move right near the bottom tire and can keep spamming it, and Bebop will never be able to attack you at all during that fight. So, not every boss can be beat like that. Only a few fights for Leo work out that well, and it's mostly because of the different terrain, the way that the truck is set up, allows you to kind of get to a sweet spot to spam the special move. So either Raphael or Leo makes that fight really easy. The next level starts off with Manhattan itself kind of getting lifted off and broken apart, and now it's flying in the sky here with uh, another big open floor segment right at the beginning of the stage to be careful of that. For the most part, this level is straightforward and actually easier to navigate than some of the previous ones. There's not as many pits to deal with, and for the most part, enemy types are just dealing with the foot soldiers. Though it is a pretty lengthy one. It makes up for that the second part of the stage, as most of the levels we've seen so far have multiple parts to them, the second part is really, really short though. Sadly, I can't use my special move downward to take out that whole 
row of foot soldiers there. That would be cool to be able to use it in any of the directions. Uh, had they done another game, it would have been cool if they somehow could have managed to do that. They have a special move going up and down, and a special move going left and right. Heading down here, you have a couple of foot soldiers busting out of the windows. I always like the broken glass effect that's done here, and you also have some more of it when we make the turn around the corner in a bit. Most enemies that throw objects at you, whether it be the kunai, spears, or whatever, usually back away a little bit so they get some space before they throw their projectile. Usually as they back up, you can quickly get in and hit that throw button in order to kind of get rid of them before they're able to even throw anything out. The release for Manhattan Project is actually a bit interesting. It came out in Japan a bit before the North American release, as well as in Japan it's actually known as TMNT2 instead of TMNT3. This is due to the fact that the original Turtles game, when it came out in Japan, Turtles hadn't been introduced in Japanese yet, so there's no cartoon, comics, or anything else in the market, so they changed the name. When the arcade game came out though, that was the original Turtles game for the Japanese market, with this one being dubbed the sequel. The worst part, though, about the release was the fact that there was no PAL release. Granted, it was 1992-93, we were going pretty late in the NES, but the fourth NES TMNT game, Tournament Fighter, did get a PAL release, so it's interesting to see why this one did not see one. I always thought it was cool with the background, we have these statue platforms, and the statue kind of comes to life with the foot soldier attacking you. This is a really lengthy stage as you've seen, thankfully we're a little bit over halfway through it, but we're pretty much just going to be dealing with small sets of foot soldiers throughout the course of this. The whip guys are a bit of a pain, their weapon of course can reach a little bit farther than some of the other foot soldiers, but easily can get taken care of by a quick throw just like any other. Once we reach the end of the park zone, we have one last manhole cover throwing foot soldier that will pop out. You then have a series of these drum throwing foot soldiers that when they get close to you can actually put the drum over top of you and freeze you in place a bit. You'll then have a series of rolling drums that come flying at you. You're able to easily dodge between these using some quick jumps. Not surprising, you will have these vans in the background open up, very reminiscent of the parking garage segment of TMNT 2, the arcade game. After those two vans, you do have a couple of the Dimension X soldiers that you'll deal with, and a few more enemies, but thankfully we are at the end of this area. We'll be jumping down into the subway opening here once we deal with just a couple of more enemies. These enemies that end up charging you with the electrical field between them are a bit annoying. You can let them run past or take out one of them, and that will break up the electricity so you can take them both out. This subway segment, though, isn't very long. You just have a couple of sets of enemies, and then a subway train will roll in with some more foot soldiers before the boss of the stage makes his appearance. The boss for level number four is Dirtbag. Dirtbag is uh, the partner of Ground Chuck that we battled in level number two. He has the giant pickaxe that he's going to be using to try to uh, swing at us. The intro of this battle takes a little bit. He kind of goes all the way off screen and then finally comes back to actually fight us. The worst thing about him is the projectile. He has this laser that will shoot out of the light on his helmet. Usually I find it pretty effective to get him to the bottom part of the screen. I have enough space between me, him, and the wall on the right side. I can get past 
his electrical laser from the light because the first few beams I'll be able to just kind of dash through it with my special move. And then if you do a quick turnaround and do the special move backwards, you can get out of the way before he's able to get one of his attacks off. Once we've defeated Dirtbag, we've now completed half of the stages in the game, moving on to stage number 5. What would a Ninja Turtles game be without a sewer level? And that's what we have here in level 5. You have a bunch of openings in the background during this beginning part that foot soldiers will kind of tunnel out of, as well as you also have exploding pipes in the background, so be careful of those. You have more of those electrical guys coming at you, holding that device. Like I said, do a drop, kick the one of them, stop them from being able to attack, and then finish them off with some quick throws if you're able to do so. The uh, TMNT 2 arcade game did not have the ability to scroll the screen up. That was one of the things that unfortunately limited some of the levels in that game, but they did figure it out for the sequel here, so we actually can go up on some of these segments. The walkway is a bit narrow, but still kind of a cool effect here, being able to kind of go up the wall here. You'll have a bunch of the foot soldiers jump out and synchronized from the water, and then eventually we make it to the top segment here, where we have more of kind of what we were doing at the very beginning, working our way to the right. With these openings in the background here, you'll have these flying nuisance robots kind of going around. They will either dive straight down, dive bomb, and blow up themselves up, or you can do drop kicks to them to take them out. Sometimes I'm even lucky to uh, throw one of the other foot soldiers into them to take them out. After that group of those and a couple more soldiers, we then have another small segment where we get to head north. When we make it to the top of this area, we then go to the right and it's all open in the water, so we do have to travel a bit in the depths, but the good thing is, at least unlike the arcade game where you actually got attacked by random missiles in the water, that doesn't happen here. After taking out some foot soldiers, the hole in the background will start spewing out some Mausers. Just stand kind of right here in the center of the screen and just attack the Mausers. I can use the throw ability and instantly tank them out. Even though you don't do the normal animation of throwing them, it still counts as doing that double damage. This is another level that has a mid-boss. We have a Mother Mauser pop out of the wall with a foot soldier riding it. This is a pretty easy fight, and it's actually the only mid-boss, or any boss in the game, that we actually fight again later on. It throws out some Mausers from its mouth, as well as will fire out a projectile, but Raph's move is able to quickly go through him back and forth, draining the health and getting rid of the Mother Mauser. Next up, we do have a few sets of foot soldiers to finish up the rest of this area before we end up jumping to the next segment of the sewer, which is where the actual boss for the stage is. Unfortunately, unlike the last mid-boss we beat in Slash, we don't get full health right away after beating him. Instead, we do have to continue on the level, defeating the last sets of foot soldiers before we're going to go through an opening in the background, where we then will finally get health before battling the level's boss in Leatherhead. Leatherhead is a relatively difficult boss, so thankfully they do give us that full health refill, though we're going to be using our special move quite a bit during this fight, so that health's going to still drain rather quickly. 
Here we have Leatherhead, easily one of my favorite bosses uh, in most of the TMNT games that he appears, as well as one of my favorite characters and villains in the cartoon. Leatherhead will have a few moves that'll end up doing a lot to you, mostly the spin attack anytime you get close enough to deliver an attack. My strategy is going in with Raph and then immediately going right back away. If you time it right where you go through and then as soon as Raph lands his feet, you tap the button, press again the opposite direction, usually I'm able to kind of get out of it. I also have to worry about the gun that Leatherhead uses. A lot of time that's able to kind of hit me from a good distance, even using my uh, special move won't help me for that. And then other times he'll get down and kind of charge across the screen that you're able to use Raph's move to kind of go through him like any of the other bosses that charge. Level number six is the Technodrome. Now, usually you would think this would be the climax of the game, but we still have a couple more levels after this one, though we do have our first encounter against Shredder at the end of the stage. You'll have a bunch of openings in the background that will open up, sending out some foot soldiers, but we also get some new enemies introduced in this level, thankfully. We have these robot guys. You can throw them, but they will take multiple throws, and it's a pretty lengthy level. I want to try to do my best to conserve as much of my health, so I'm not going to spam the special move quite as often. Also introduced in this level are these robots, they kind of drop down in these ball forms and then break apart into the little robots, they move around, they can fire out uh, beams, similar to the beam that Dirtbag shot out from his helmet at the boss fight in level 4. A lot of times, like I've been doing with some of the enemies, I like to group them up and do one special move if possible to hit as many of them as I can to try to wipe them out quickly. You get quite a lot of them during this segment, so maximize, if you're going to use your special move, maximize the effort for sure. Right after that, you're introduced to another new type of foot soldier. These guys have little hoverboards that they get to ride into battle. A couple more spears right there. Followed up by more of those robots. Watch out for their gun projectile. A lot of times they'll run really fast to the opposite side of the screen and start firing out at you. Thankfully, a, a quick sidestep up or down can get away from those guys. After a couple of those heavyweight guys and kunai throwing guys, you'll notice that the uh, floor is a little changed up here as well. Be careful uh, as you go through it, it will open up and send out some more foot soldiers your way. What's cool is when they do pop out of this, they all land on the exact same spot, so you can use a special move to wipe them instantly all out. Right after this opening, you're immediately bombarded by a ton of rock soldiers firing missile launchers at you, and they just don't stop firing, so get in there quickly if you can, take them out, and thankfully you do get a full health replenishment right after that. Then, it's followed up by a couple of those wrecking balls going back and forth with foot soldiers, and then actually coming from the background as well. One of the TV monitors will then turn on, sending out a couple of these flying, annoying little robot guys. We have these in TMNT 2 as well. Quick special move though, once they fully get on the screen, we'll instantly get rid of them. Just like with the foot soldiers, even the rock soldiers can be a little bit different as far as the color schemes and such, but the way you're going to be dealing with them is pretty much the same. After another set of those robots, you'll notice in the background kind of these machines that are making the foot soldiers. It's kind of cool to see them get formed together, and then you'll have to battle them. After dealing with a couple of sets of robots and rock soldiers, we then make it to a conveyor belt segment. A lot of beat em up games have these kind of segments, and this one is uh, pretty, pretty typical of that. Along the way, you're going to be attacked by lasers. Thankfully, uh, you can jump over some. You kind of have to look at where they're coming at you. Sometimes it's difficult to see exactly. But basically, you can go under a couple, and you'll have to jump over the ones at the very bottom. You're also dealing with a few other enemies during this segment. 
Since our goal is actually to defeat the foot soldier enemies, they will just kind of stay on screen and the lasers will just keep coming until they're gone, so focus on them so you can try to get off this conveyor belt segment quickly. Finally, the conveyor belt segment will come to an end mercifully. Right after that, though, you're attacked immediately by a set of those robot guys. Be careful, of course, of their gun, and you can use kind of drop kicks uh, at a distance to try to close the range between you and them. After that group, though, it's time for one of the mini boss encounters. This time we have Razor of Toka and Razor. It's cool to see the uh, kind of teams in this game, but instead of fighting them both together, like we see in some games and what we would end up seeing in Turtles in Time, you end up battling them one-on-one. -on -one. Razor is another one of my favorites. He will charge towards you, and every time he does that, he'll do two quick swipes. If you're Raphael here, you're able to kind of dash through him when he does that and get on the opposite side, so when he does do the swipes, you're past him. Just try to do your best not to attack him directly when he's against the left or right side, and for the most part, it's a relatively simple fight. But right after that, we get another boss, we don't get any health back, and now we have to battle Shredder. During this battle with Shredder, you can see April O'Neil tied up in the background, and you have Shredder that actually has a decent amount of speed to him. He's able to jump up and do a dive kick similar to what you're able to do with your own turtle. Him clearing a decent amount of distance is nice for him, but at the same time gives us plenty of opportunities to quickly dash in with Raphael's special move to keep Shredder at bay for most of his fight. Thankfully, Shredder really is only going to use the dive kick and his sword during this battle a lot easier than other Shredder fights, but don't worry, he makes up for it during the last Shredder encounter. Level number 7 starts us off on an elevator. I always loved elevator segments in beat-em-up games. I always enjoy kind of throwing enemies off of that. One of my favorites of all time is the one in Streets of Rage 1. During this level, we have these giant Mauser containers that will fall down from the sky and break open, sending Mausers everywhere. Another cool thing I like to do in this game is wait for it to just about get ready to explode and then do the special move and try to wipe out as many, if not all, the Mausers with a single special attack, which can be a little bit difficult to do. Usually, I have one or two stragglers afterwards. You then have a series of the hoverboard riding foot soldiers riding up to your elevator platform. I like to be able to easily grab them after doing a nice drop kick to knock them off of their platform. During the next segment, you're going to have literally a ton of weights coming down on top of you. Uh, they kind of come down sporadically. I don't know if there is a set pattern to them, and they clear up most edges and most parts on it, so a lot of times I usually like to stay still and just move if I absolutely have to. After the wait, you'll then have another set of the hoverboard riding foot soldiers. These are the ones with spears this time. This is the last part, though, of the elevator. Once you uh, finish up this group of guys, we're moving on to the rooftop area of the level. Thankfully, it's nice to be on a solid level again with enough space to move around, not having to worry too much about pits or falling off the sides. After some foot soldiers, you'll have a group of the Dimension X rock soldiers, this time the turquoise guys. They have a little bit more health and defense and such. Then 
this whole segment here reminds me a bit of level 4 when we're going through the park. You're just having consistent sets of enemies, but you don't have, like, really anything other than foot soldiers or Dimension X soldiers. You're not getting the types of different robots, and you're not getting really any kind of other hazards to deal with during this segment. They do a good job, though, of mixing it up, at least giving you different types of enemies after each set, so you don't get completely bored dealing with them. About halfway through the level, it will change up a little bit, as you can see the roof kind of changes up its shape, so now we have a little bit of a smaller area. Because of this, you will have the foot soldiers sending out the electrical charge towards you, and because of the distance between them, it takes up a decent amount of space there, so be careful of that. Right after that, you'll have the ship kind of appear in the background, and sending out a few foot soldiers. It's just another fancy way to send out sets of three foot soldiers your way. After the ship finally gets done sending us those foot soldiers, the background does change up a little bit, as you can see, and there's also a flashing neon sign in the background with the Foot Clan logo on it. This is thankfully the end of the level, just have to deal with a few sets of enemies before Toka ends up making his appearance. Here we have Toka, the partner of Razar that we dealt with in the previous level. Toka likes to run for it really quickly and then do a bunch of really fast jabs. Thankfully, the special move will allow us to go right through him and avoid those jabs. He also will sometimes kind of like jump towards you, lunging, trying to bite your head. Quickly do the special move to go right through him to avoid getting grabbed by that. Once Toka is defeated, though, we are moving on to the 8th and final level of the game. The final level of the game is a lengthy one, for sure, and it's mostly just fighting wave after wave of foot soldiers. There's not a ton of pitfalls or other hazards throughout the level to kind of slow you down. You're just having to deal with all of the different types of the foot soldiers and other enemies we've dealt with throughout the course of the game, including the different rock soldiers, like the turquoise ones here. Watch out for their gun and then get in quickly in order to get rid of them. With having a bit of a bigger playing field to deal with all of these foot soldiers, they can kind of spread apart easily and can be a bit tricky to track some of them down in order to land that throw, especially ones that run away to try to get those projectiles in on you. Hey, hey. 
Here we have a rematch against the flying machine guys that we dealt with in level number two. You can use a special move when they dive down low or just do drop kicks to take them out. In the background, you'll notice some tubes that a couple of foot soldiers will come in from, but before them, you have a couple more of those robots that drop in and then break apart. Try to do your best to group them together before doing any special moves. It's really difficult to try to keep my health up during the course of the level, so a lot of times just to help me get through this, and as long as I have a few lives left, I'm going to use that special move as much as possible to get through this one. Thankfully, there is a little bit of help in the level. There is a full health replenishment coming up right here. Just be careful when grabbing it, especially if you're already low health, that the rock soldiers with their giant cannons don't end up blasting you and cause you to lose a life when going for that health. Here we have a rematch against the Mother Mauser from the sewer stage. Just like before, it will spew out Mausers from its mouth will also fire lasers out at you. Try to keep it away from the far right so it's not directly in that force field, but if it is, you can do the special move still, just make sure that you're a little bit ways away so that when you do do it, you don't go like completely through the foot soldier and into the electrical field. Once it's taken care of, we're moving on to the second part of the final level here. Most of this is pretty much just more of the same that we've been dealing with. It's wave after wave of foot soldier. Not really the most exciting until a little bit ways and we finally get at least a new enemy type before we make it to the end. At this point, you're probably getting a little bit low on health. Thankfully, a little bit ways into the segment, there is a full health replenishment before we kind of get to a background change. Here we have the new enemy type, these bouncing ball robot guys will come out of the background. They have a laser that will fire out of the front of them that you'll have to avoid. You're also dealing with plenty of other foot soldiers during this segment. Thankfully, you can easily take them out. You can even use the throw to help you out during this fight, or use drop kicks or special moves to easily deal with them. Here we have more of those annoying robots, they always end up appearing on whatever side you're not on. And then we'll usually go right into that gun firing pattern, so we're going to try to get away from them. You then have a series of the hoverboard guys, but these guys will try to crush you, so be careful they don't end up stomping down on you. 
Right after them, though, you basically have a gauntlet of just things flying at you. You have a series of the synchronized foot soldiers and then wrecking balls towards you. The game is doing everything it can to try to stop you before you end up making it to Krang at the end. Here we have another set of those bouncing ball robots coming out of the background. This is right near the end though, we're getting to the final sets of enemies before we finally get to take on the bosses. Finally, we make it to the end of this area. We have the electrical field to the right of us, so be careful that we don't run into that. And then the door at the top opens up for the battle against Krang. Krang is a pretty intense fight. He has missiles that he launches out, as well as he uses his fist to fly out to hit you. The fist is easy enough to dodge, just give them the special move right through it, will allow you to negate the damage and still hit him. For the missiles, the key is standing still. Every time he launches the missiles, if you stop moving, a lot of times you're able to get them to just kind of arc over you, but if you start moving when he starts firing them, they will track you down and deliver a hit. A little bit ways into the fight, Krang will break apart. During this segment, the top part will use lasers and try to crash down on you to hit you, but the legs are kicking all around doing flying knees. For the most part, it's a complete crapshoot if I'm able to survive during this segment. A lot of times I just keep using that special move and hope for the best. After a while, he will reform, and it's more of what we dealt with at the beginning part of this fight, but eventually Krang will go down and we go into the battle against Super Shredder. Super Shredder's battle starts off with a cool scene of him pouring the ooze over top of him and then transforming. He has a couple of moves, including this lightning move, that Raphael ends up being really efficient against. Anytime that Shredder stops and summons this lightning bolt from the ceiling, wait a second for it to start coming down as long as it doesn't land directly on top of you. You should be able to do your special move towards it, and it works really weird. Sometimes it kind of like reflects it backwards, and other times you just go through it and you don't end up taking any damage from it. Shredder can also fire a fireball straight out, but just like any of these kind of front-facing projectiles that these bosses use, the special move goes right through it in order to deliver damage. Being the final boss of the game, he does have a ton of health, so it'll take quite a while to finally drain it enough where he will start flashing, but eventually it starts happening, and once you finish off Shredder, you can sit back and enjoy the ending the TMNT 3 The Manhattan Project for the NES.
after the ending and enemy character roll call, we then get our staff credit screen. Overall, TMNT 3 The Manhattan Project is a solid TMNT game and a pretty fondly remembered beat em up game on the NES. It's unfortunate that it never saw the PAL territory release, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's going to be really any kind of way to re release the game with copyright and licensing issues, so we may not see another version or re release of this game in the future, but it would be nice, or maybe even an updated version of this one down the road. As the credits finish up, we get our presented by Konami with the logo there, and then it goes back to the title screen, and you can start the game all over again. But with that, guys, it's going to wrap up this play it through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.